footy's back. G'day, I'm Chris Mainwaring. Wait, no, I'm not. Oh. I'm James Clements. Jeez, g'day. This is the AFL Today Show, your one-stop shop for all things AFL footy. And joining me as usual are a couple of local weirdos, footy nuffs, some, few, would call them AFL experts. Over there, it's Alex Donnelly. Yeah, I'm on Heaney Appeal Watch tonight, <laughs> so yeah. we're only here for that, and I might leave if he uh, doesn't get off and Leo can come in. This is weird. You're not usually on the Thursday night show, and there's probably a good reason why. Uh, <laughs> it's a stats boy in the middle as well. I feel like we've downgraded on the Thursday night show, but, but Heaney Watch, I, I like Alex being mm. a bit intense on the side there. So Don't mind that. We're, we've sacked Leo because he came out and was like, the dog's <laughs> going to kick 10 goals in the first quarter. And then they got blown to off the To be fair, we talked about Adelaide. this on the weekend. I, I think we've got, I think I got my big call on the weekend. I think very rarely do we get our big call right. So I'll, I'll let him off. I'll let him well, off. Well, they are very big calls. They yeah, are very that's, big. That's the point Actually, of the maybe big we should call. call them very big calls. Anyway, I think I some think of the biggest like third Thursday this year. Some of the biggest calls we got from this week were James Robottom hanging out on the show yesterday. Yes, very fun. Some pretty big calls in that one. So if you haven't listened mm. to it, what are you doing? That was a great chat. Uh, otherwise, better get around all of our fun social gear. Check out the YouTube channel. What else? Basically, Instagram, TikTok, X, all the good stuff right there. Yep. It's the AFL Today Show, Sports Today Show on Facey. Thing is, before we get into the Thursday night team show, no. Stats boy. Heaney, the appeal is on tonight. Yep. What do you think actually happens? Personally, in the rules, I think he's not going to get off. I think it's going to be a week. And I know that will annoy Sydney fans. They're just playing North Melbourne. It's not that big of a deal. He might not even win the Brownlow. I, I hope he doesn't win the Brownlow if he does, doesn't get off. But yeah, personally, in the rules, he's done the wrong thing. So I'm saying he doesn't get a, he gets a week. But I think the rules are a bit wrong. And then, is it it's the a bit wording softer, or the like, actual rule itself? Bit of both, bit of both. There's in okay. the the word the wording and everything about it. I think it still leans toward him towards him getting a week. But Sydney fans will uh, have you agree differently. Nice one. Well, we don't need to hear from Alex. So. <laughs> I'm, I've <laughs> actually changed. Like looking at what the Swans' argument's been, I'm leaning towards him not getting off now. Yeah, I don't like what they've done. I kind of think it just gets slid under. It's like, nah, you can't quite argue against. It. Yeah, it's just a week. It's not it's that big of a deal for Sydney Cripps season. went to this and got off, so it's. But anyway, the Swans have just named Isaac Heaney in their team to like. We're Wait, off. have they actually? Yeah, literally. Of that is that is crazy. Other little bits and bobs of news. So we talked about Adam Simpson being sacked uh, mm -hmm. in yesterday's show. He was offered the chance to yes. one, you know, at least coach the team one final time. He went, nah, I'm good. I'm going to go spend my money. Yeah. Poosh. Well, he knows he's going to buy doing, a jet ski. He's, he's going to be at the game just drinking tins, apparently. He's doing the yeah. coin toss. Yeah, he's doing the coin toss. Which yeah. feels really weird. Yeah, that, After he buys weird. a jet ski. <laughs> this is, yeah. is he going to ride the jet ski onto the field? Living the dream. He also whispered this. to Harley Reid that he has to stay. Did you guys see that? No, that was to Bally Williams that the mustache has got to go. <laughs> no. That's exactly the opposite of what you yeah. thought was going on here. Yeah. He literally <laughs> lent into Harley Reid. Is he going to be Kenny Powers with the jet ski? Ooh. Yes. <laughs> he's going to get that sick purple looking one. I love that. That's awesome. Dean Cox leads the race apparently to replace Simo. He's uh, the next Sydney Swans coach. Why would he leave Sydney? I don't know. Get paid more he, in Perth. He's a, uh, obviously a West Coast legend, so I think he would rather coach West Coast than Sydney. Everyone knows. So that. what also is not mentioned is that his wife has recently opened a restaurant in Sydney as well. Ooh. So there's like business routes So there West as Coast, well. they're getting relocated to is Sydney. Is she the chef at the restaurant? She owns it. I don't you know what you can also own from Perth? A she could own it. It's a very good point. Expensive. It's not the bloody bear, mate. Like, settle down. <laughs> it's like, she's in there going, everybody go better, faster, harder. God damn it. This is Coxie's money. You better not screw this up. Oh, jeez. Etc. She's so, gone around his daughter. <laughs> You're an idiot. Dean Cox has had to actually <laughs> sell his grand final premiership medal to fund this. Nice. That was the loudest we've ever had on that this podcast. We've got NBA Australia on. Is your brain okay? And speaking of uh, loud, Katy Perry. <laughs> yes, I'm excited. Because, baby, you're a holy read. You're not going to be in the GF. Not this year. Next year, you might be. We're just saying. Uh, not. I like this idea of Katy Perry for the grand final. Oh, I thought you wouldn't like it because it's not Aussie. Now, there we go. Robbie Williams. I was, was trying to fire awesome. him. No, Robbie and Kiss was awesome last year. I was no, there. It wasn't. Kiss was great. Kiss was great. Very simple. I thought when it comes like it. to grand final entertainment, yeah. are you an entertainer? Yeah. Are you Good call. a big crowd entertainer? Or should we simply, and this is my vibe, is always go back to the COVID grand final in Perth yep. where we get a bunch of local acts to band together. That was cool. As a showcase of Aussie music. That's yeah. my entire Eskimo vibe. Joe was good. Always. I'm more here for Baker Boy. Yeah. Baker Eskimo Boy was great. Joe, I have 
You have problems. Cav, you and I, you know that we have problems. That's fine. Don't worry about the it. Killers. We'll talk about it later. We're great. Big Frio uh, fan, but that's fine. Uh, outside of this, you have to be a big arena act. I agree. Simple I agree. as it. Especially Katie if you're at the G. Well, Katie, Katie Perry's a big arena act. But also think of her at the Women's World Cup, how awesome that was. That was great, yeah. The other one is, is like, I don't know, the wine mums of Australia would love it. It's like, just that's Katie pink. Perry. This is that's great. pink. I know pink. No, that's but fine. Katie Perry's not that Katie Perry, but pink Katie is the Perry. wine mum. Katie Perry is also just now. She's aged out into wine mums. So yeah, yeah, she has. Because she hasn't I'm released. Here for it I love it. That's she hasn't released anything. said this morning, she's like, she must really need the money. It's like you get. Well, a she million, hasn't released anything for a couple of years. But it's like so. you get a million bucks. Yeah. She also did the Super Bowl ads, like the. Mm. She did actually. The Pepsi she would have got a lot for that. Like yeah. A few years ago, so. Yeah. I think she can do it. I think that'll be good entertainment. Let's do some game previews yes. for round. What is this? Eighteen. Eighteen. Jeez. That's horrifying. We've got so I know. few rounds of footy left. How's it round eighteen? What am I going to do? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Footy, 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 footy basketball. That's how it goes. Basketball, yeah. Right, let's start off. Friday night, it's a pretty big game. The Collingwood Magpies taking on the Geelong Cataroos. Uh, minus four and a half. How are the Cats actually favourites in this game? Because big. they're the better team. Okay. And they're going to win. Uh, I would just assume due to Collingwood's injury list and how they're looking at the moment, it's like we're I relying think on Geelong Nick have won their last two. Collingwood uh, they lost last week. Last lost, lost last week, of course. Yeah. So the running premiers the uh, the seventh on offense, twelfth on defense, which might be the biggest damning point in their season but it's, so it's, far. It's, it's four points difference, sure, four and a half. It's like it's a goal difference, whatever. Yeah. The vibe here though is like the biggest thing that the Pies are dealing with is injuries. If you look at the ins and outs for this one specifically, yeah, let's have a look. I mean, it's a tough one. You lose Charlie Dean, just dropped. But Jeremy Howe's already out. That's a big out. My check, out. Huge out. Back in, though. Jamie Billy Elliott, not bad. I thought his foot was getting chopped Mr. off. Mr. Mark of the Year, yeah. Not bad. Back earlier than expected, I think. Johnny Noble, the weapon. Oh, we love Johnny Noble. This He's is back. why I'm back, Johnny! <laughs> yeah. Johnny! Yes! And Reef McInnes. Uh, yeah, you're no, fine, Reef. No changes for the Cats, uh, which is a weird one, but Ollie Henry was named last week, and this is the big thing, I think, for them. Uh, he was the sub last week. He won't week. be the sub I this week. He's not be the sub this week. Like, we're so. playing the Hawks down in, in Geelong. We can beat him easy. It's to ease him back in, but also think mm. about how lacking in tools Ge- uh, Collingwood's defense is. Exactly. Ollie Henry, Ollie can, Henry. He can really can help stretch day. them. You can 100%. Field, yeah. They can now throw out their Shannon Neal. Yeah. Jezza. Yeah. Shannon Neal's been pretty Neal. good. Let's yeah. go. Yep. Don't mind this. The stats, stats, man. Yeah, four of the last five meetings between the two have been decided by 13 points or less. I've been to a lot of them at the G. and I'm going tomorrow night. I'm going to I'm gonna go as well, actually. Uh, Collingwood won last year by eight points. You just got a lot of just classic games because Colling- other than that year where Collingwood finished 17th, both both Collingwood and Geelong in my lifetime, uh, for example, have just been awesome. So got a lot of good games. Didn't we live stream like round two last year and it was awesome? Uh, like yeah, we did kicked, actually. Kicked we a did. running banana. It was we like did. the greatest yeah, goal yeah. I've seen. Yeah. And then uh, 12 of Geelong's last 13 matches at the MCG have gone over the total points line. Ooh. So Geelong haven't been kicking massive scores. Uh, they're still third in offense, but that yeah. helps when they've been kicking like they've been kicking like 120 plus at the G. They've, they've yeah. been awesome. Every time I've seen them at the G, they've been kicking huge scores for against Carlton, against for Carlton, example, yeah. uh, and a few other games. The so, first game against Carlton. So I'll be going over in this one, 168. I think that can go over just yeah, because of the long offense. It's both the defenses have been it's quite lacking. So bit yeah. of rain around tomorrow though as well. I meant to get about I don't 10 worry, to 12 yeah. My point is, I don't know if weather exists. <laughs> I think okay. we've got a bit of a moment with the old over-unders. Jane Bunn says otherwise. I think we've got a lot of times when it goes, ah, you know what? Oh, the over-under, we better go better stay clear with the under. Stick with the under. It's a bit wet, <laughs> a bit gross. And then boom, it's like 100 to 90. Yeah. Like, absolutely you no You could problem. have a dry yeah. day where there's just two good defenses. Exactly. So I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Sometimes at Marvel, it's just like it's a gross game. Marvel, you know, there's no weather impacting that yeah. one because they won't open the bloody roof because they're cowards. <sighs> Andrew, I want to know how much it costs to open the roof. I just want to know if it's like a big cost thing. Okay, sure. That's not a cost thing. Just give me a winch. It's a, it's, <laughs> a, oh, it's it. because they're just there. Ring, 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 ring. Okay, good. You're super <laughs> XV. Ring, 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 my good friend and noted leader in the uh, clubhouse, I think, for Rising Star, Ollie Dempsey. Yeah, he doesn't no. mind a good night match here as well, Stats Boy. Yeah, 25 plus disposal, disposals in his last four night matches. So a few of them have been at the G. He, he loves playing at the G as well. I think he averages over 20 disposals there. So you'll you be might, loving it. You might also ask, why is he my good friend? Well, I saw him at the basketball last week. Ah, uh, ah did you have a chat? Just sitting behind him. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so, you, so, you like oh, so he was ahead of you, like even though you're the big NBA guy. 
Yes, he's, he's, he's an actual celebrity. I'm no one. Oh, I was with you. I'll give you your props. You, uh, in Gold Coast, uh, every time. No, when we were, we, we were pretty much front row in Gold Coast. And on, everywhere we on. walked in Gold Coast, people were yelling out at you. When we so. were at Gather Round yeah. at Norwood, some random just like, yeah. NBA Australia. Are you NBA Australia? <laughs> I got, yes. We got that in Gold Coast as well. So. <laughs> but that was for bl NBA Blitz. We were at the footy and some dudes true, like to gym. True. Are you the NBA Australia guy? <laughs> I don't know, I'm just famous. That's, yeah, also that's why he keeps the beard. It actually doesn't help that he's wearing the NBA Australia hat, the hoodie, the pants. I don't know. <laughs> I wish I had NBA Australia pants. They'd be, they'd, be, they'd be snap pants. Snap pants, yeah, like for the NBA You know place. what I miss? Snap pants. I miss snap pants more than just about I anything. I think Celtics still have a couple. I reckon I could probably find myself a good pair of snap pants right now, yeah. and I feel like I ought to. So why don't we Leo, wear them in the office? That up. Snap pants. Like snap pants and then- That the, feels like a got, HR violation. Yeah, true. Are you wearing <laughs> pants underneath? Stats boys like, guess what, boys? Oh, <laughs> HR! It's easy. Anyway, uh, answer the big question here. <laughs> Are the cats good? Uh, yes, I think they're going to be top four this year, Jim. Maybe. I, no, think there's only, maybe. I think there's only two good teams in the league. I'm pretty sure you've written off the cats eight different times here. I, I, I wrote, I wrote them good. off when Carlton just threw them out of the MCG I, a month ago. I've said the cats have been good all the way through. I think they just had a bit of a blip. The last two weeks they've been awesome. Both by 40 plus or 45 plus. And I think they're back and they're going to make the top four. I think they're good, but they can't win the flag. Yeah, I agree with that, but I think they can be top so four. So after that horror run, they've now, like, I love how, like, uh, wins and losses work for the simple fact of, like, oh, they'd won one of their last seven. One of those falls in the now fact that they've won three of their last five. Can you also look at kind of what, That's good. Can yeah. you also look at what three of their losses were? They lost to the greatest team in the AFL, Gold Coast and Darwin. Sure. They lost, <laughs> yeah. they lost to Carlton at the MCG, and then they lost to the best team in the last 150 years at the SCG. That's, that's my City. point. They, they've they actually, like the team, they, the had games a murderer's run. they had a bad run. So that's why I still think they're really good. Nice one. Any other stats there, stats man? Uh, we've got Krug. So we love him on the show. Nathan Kruger, two plus in three of his last four home games. And he's playing against his old team. So They really need him to fire because I've got no tools, Collingwood. At both ends as well. You've got Ollie Henry against his old team. You've got yep. Kruger against his old team. I love that. I love uh, Ollie Henry against his old team. The first time he played was when that famous chase down tackle and I was there and that was the loudest roar I've heard Collingwood, even louder than some of their after the siren uh, wins. So, yeah, Krugs and Ollie Henry just wants to watch against their old teams. I love Ollie Henry in this game for the simple fact that I think each time he's played Collingwood, he likes vertical straps rather than horizontal. <laughs> yeah, he smashes it. So he comes like four. Was it last four or five last time out? Yeah, uh, two or three. The pr prior four, time. I think it was. Yeah, loving this. So uh, tips, margin, picks. I think the pies pull this one really out of <sighs> absolutely nowhere. One or two points. I reckon it's an absolute Friday night classic. So one of my apocryphal <laughs> AFL, like one of my favorite AFL moments is not being at a game, but walking past it. So I used to work in Richmond, Yep. Uh, would walk home to Collingwood. Ran, ran and the MCG. Ran yeah. the G. Yep. And so the Pies and the Cats were playing in a, I believe, qualifying final. I was there. One of it, I think it one was of the, the loudest games I've ever been, and I was walking past the bloody place. So we just awesome. we'd just started all working together at that stage. I went to that game. Yeah, that's right. I yeah. think it is top three games of football I've ever seen. It was yeah. a great game. I think I might have been I think there it also well. helped that it was like the 440 MCG Saturday. It was That's the best awesome. time. That it was voted by the fans. That that late Arvo Saturday is the best time. Twilight Saturday qualifying final. You, you can roll after. into the pub for a few it's tins. It's it was beautiful. great. Beautiful. Cool. Pies by one. Stats, boy. Uh, I'm going Cats by 10. They've been the better team. Pies have too many outs. Not enough tall, so I'm going Cats. Alexi. Uh, four goals, Geelong. Jezza Cameron, big night. He needs to have a big night. He's been pretty average the last couple of months. Probably got to stop until he starts kicking goals. Start, stop doing that ball thing where he just yeah, pumps he squishes it in. The just, ball, like, yeah. just, mate, just kick the goddamn That's his thing. tradition, though. Yeah. Saturday, Sydney versus oh, North. Oh, let's go, mate. This is an <laughs> AFL Today bloodbath. Uh, the Swans are 46.5 really. point favourite. That's a bit of a joke, that one. At line, the SCG. I, I don't know. This is one team coming off a win. North. Exactly. And what another team that lost to the St Kilda Saints last week. One of them is somehow favoured by 47 points. Yeah. This is, of course, the early game at the SCG, 145 in the afternoon on Prime Saturday. Time. The over under is 175 and a half. Way over. That's Way over. I actually don't mind that. This is clearing yeah. the over by some margin. Because when Sydney, especially the SCG, play attacking, North could get, still get a score, a fair, fair amount of score, and then, yeah. Well, Sydney no, you could just also have a look. up 120. You have a look at the Swans' offense and the Roos' defense. Yeah. This is clearing. But the, the Roos' defense in the last month and a half has only averaged, uh, I think it's 77 points. That still clears this. But, yeah, I agree. I think it will still go over. Interesting. We should have nailed down what the Swans' SCG record was this year as well. Mm. Well, Brody Grundy averages a lazy 127 super coach points at the SCG Poor. this year. 
I know that off the top of my head. Because actually, I it's do. a handy week to have a good captain because uh, yeah. everyone's out. Yeah. This is actually a great super coach game. You've got like it is like coming out the wazoo between McKercher, LDU. Actually, is Fisher back in? Let's have a quick we look. Don't, I don't Warlord. believe. Wardlaw is absolutely crushing Warlord. as well. Warlord, Warlord has been named. Oh, we're going to win. The That's Warlord right. is crushing. Callum Mills back in for his first game of the year. That's crazy. So in terms of, we've got Callum Mills coming in for this one's in for Sam Wicks. Heaney has been named. I so hate you do that's wonder. the arrogance of naming him. Well, no, because I think you, if you have to name him and then because if you make a so late change, play. there needs to be a specific yeah. reason. Whereas if he gets ruled out by the tribunal in an you hour's time. You can just take him out, yeah. So quickly, the Swans this year at the SCG, uh, round zero, 86 points. But then 131, 110, 98, 117, 112, 98. Yeah, that's Yes, yeah, so they're averaging about good. 110. That's very good. Not bad. Uh and their points allowed is uh, about 75. Will Phillips, Warlord for the Roos. The- Will Phillips admitted that that is a bad – so Clarko, I thought, was a really good call, putting Will Phillips as a tagger. The fact that he's out against the best team in the comp – so he's that, not going to tag, tag one of the best Gildan. players. Yeah. Sorry, that's one of the white flags of Clarko, apparently. What he's is he like, doing? Oh, we're just going to give this so, game like, up as, anyway. As a North fan, like also thinking about how – the last five weeks have been for Northwest. Since you won that West Coast game, really competitive. Yeah, the Collingwood should've, game should have won. Should have won. Melbourne game probably should have won. Yeah, threw a lot of the Western Bulldogs. Probably never going to win that. No, but but you threw three a lot goals. of them. Yeah, yeah, and then you had the win last week. Mm. As a North fan, you're like, there's the win. Is the flat game coming? Probably, especially yeah. with the travel. I don't want to say it, but yeah, especially. Genuinely, Phillips out yeah. is such a big out for us. I, I'm very surprised the, that they've admitted. There it. is the potential for the flat game, but personally, I've actually had the James uh, Clements twenty bucks. On North Melbourne to cover this line. <laughs> that is a waste of twenty bucks. You can spend that on a, uh, on a Stein. Uh, for you example. know what? I will happily lose this twenty bucks. That is that is dumb. Just give me twenty bucks. Because also, so this we we had a look. So the, <laughs> exactly. la, the last bunch of meetings between these two have been really close. Yeah, um, uh, six under two goals. Yep. But the Swans have won six of the last eight at the SCG. One of the losses was by two points, and one of the losses was when you were flying. You won by forty. Um, Chad Warner also has been crushing it at the SCG this year. Yes. This is a very different story if it's at Marvel. Oh, 100%. Well, the, uh, last we year. We saw last year where they nearly, they basically should have won. That was when I was couldn't. away and I'm getting 10 million messages in America so, going, you stuffed up your interchange. We, we lost by three points. The greatest tank ever. Definitely should have won that game. So North that Marvel. was Warlord's first game. It was. And he, he killed crushed. it. He killed it. Yeah, yeah. That also, was, the Swans' ruck was Lachlan McAndrew. Yeah, but this, you were trying to make an excuse for oh, Lachlan McAndrew. You should still smash North Melbourne. It was like, Lachlan. Now mate. you got Cherry versus Grundy, which is actually a treat. Very, yeah. yeah two of the best ruckmen in the comp. So that's very. It's actually Cherry's uh, 50th game as well. Stats, stats, man. Go. Yeah, a few stats. Alex already touched on one, but Sydney have won the last seven against North. Six of those were under 11 points, which is really good. Else, yeah. Last year, interchange issue, which really frustrated me. Swans have won, uh, sorry, won six of the last eight uh, meetings at the SCG. So yeah. North aren't very good at the SCG. It's had some really close games there, which has really surprised me, uh, especially the last couple of years. The underdog as well has covered the line in the last 10 meetings uh, between the two. Well, we also had yeah. two years where we completely sucked as well as a Swans fan. We yeah. finished, what, fourth last and second last. Yeah, that like, sounds a lot like excuses. Excuses. Yeah. Also, in, in the game last year, there was no Chad Warner, Callum Mills, and I'm completely spacing on Dave yeah. Randy. But if you look at Sydney's list from last year, you still sort of won. We were like 14th this time yeah. last year. Yeah. And then uh, North have lost, though, the last 19 games against top eight teams. So Whoa. that's not a good record. <laughs> Beat Gold Coast, but Gold Coast weren't a top eight team. Oh. At the time. So <laughs> that's funny. That's, that still is alive. Lost last 19 games against top eight. Yep. All right. Anything else there for player stats? Oh, we got some player stats. Alex talked about uh, Chad Warner. He's kicked two plus goals in six of his last eight. That's what you want from a midfielder or a guy that's rotating yeah. half forward. I think Swans fans will love it. And if Heaney's not playing, that's massive. Heaney's not playing. Easy. You need that. a few goals from him. Callum my, Mills. My favorite stat of the year, just being a North fan, is Harry Sheasel has had more 30 plus disposals games in his career than not. So he's had 20 uh, disposal, sorry, 20, 30 plus disposal games out of his 39 games of his career, which is the only player in the So continuity. what you're telling me is he's going to get James Jordan to line of demarcation Western Bulldogs. If I'm, oh, if, so you, if you're line. James Jordan, would you go to Sheasel? Or yeah, because you? he, he mm. plays on the halfback flank. So yeah. you just send no, James. No, no, Sheasel hasn't been playing halfback. Send him to McKersha. Sheasel's been playing midfield. Shut down McKersha and away you go. Win the Rob, our, our good friend yeah. James Robottom. Yeah. Who's going to be in the middle. He's going to be smashing it anyway. <laughs> 115 super coach points in yep. the bag. Good Bang. POD. Big question for this one. Will I'll Logan McDonald yeah. miss again after the siren? I, just I, don't, that was I don't think it'll matter if he does. So. <laughs> uh, my big question for this one is quite simply, do North just show us any fight? Yes. Because it would be very easy for them to go up there and get smashed. I think they've I think for like three quarters or two and a half. So, they match up weirdly okay. As a fan, what is in this instance where it could be a flat game, Swans ideally are going to come out breathing fire. What is – 
an okay loss, I guess. I think... Oh, Given I, it's a dollar oh seven nine dollars Yeah, I, I've tipped uh, Swans by 35 here. So yeah. maybe 35, 30 points. So under the 40 because, points. Because usually when it's that sort of margin, you go, all right, you're sort of in it for three quarters. If if North can be in it for two and a half, three quarters, I'll be happy. So if it's okay. like three goals all the way and then the last quarter, the Swans sort of just kick yeah. away... But like you said, I think we've had a really strong five weeks. There's going to be a drop off at some point when yeah. you're 70th on the ladder. So this could be easily 40 plus, but I'm going to go Swans by 35. We are on the second game. So Swans by 32, Alex. Yeah, we probably should argue. Uh, Swans by 46. Hawthorne, Frio, down in Tassie, this one. I think it's got it listed at the MCG there, Stats Boy. I think it, it is. Might be it's wrong, in Tassie. Man. I think it's in Tassie. It's in Tassie. On sports bet, it said MCG. Bet you a million dollars that's, that's in Tassie. Weird. You might be quite wrong there, buddy. I, uh, I, I literally looked at it <laughs> before. Utah Stadium, 145. Yeah. Sorry about that. PM. James Sisley goes out. Josh Ward. Cole Shadir in for the Hawks. Cole Shadir is an interesting one for Mitch Lewis, who obviously did his ACL. I, I like him. Tough. Yeah, yeah. Cole Shadir has been very, very handy. But Sicily, in Tassie, what happens here? <laughs> no, is he still Chaos. Are you going to start doing the off-the-cuff punching stuff? Well, he just went into Uruguay. Like You, you just saw Uruguay in the uh, – Darwin Nunes, Copper he, America. Yeah. Copper America. He's just like, where are we? <laughs> Charlotte. Don't care. Let's punch on. Back, 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 back. That's Sicily. He's like, God, I hate it here. I hate Freo. I hate Tassie. I'm just going to punch on with everybody. And off he goes. So just swinging for the fences. Seamus, so Seamus Mitchell out as well. Jack Gunston managed in for Freo. Patrick Voss for uh, Sean Darcy. Patrick Voss? Really? No Alex Pierce. They thought he'd come back. I think they, they were pretty happy to give him an extra week with the broken arm weird thing. And so. it's a smart. This is like one of the longest trips in footy. Yeah, from Freo to Tassie, it's going to... They've got a chart. They actually have to charter a specific flight. Oh my really? God, they're, they're not driving like uh, Jeremy, Jeremy McGovern. We'll get to that later. <laughs> McGovern's still not home. I've got a quick stat for, for this one because oh. Stats Guy put it down as uh, the MCG. Freo are two and two from 12 in Tasmania. So that oh, includes really? Dory Babel. I'm surprised they've played that many But also, I think, yeah, they always get stitched up because mm-hmm. Fremantle are not going to get big crowds in Victoria. Interesting. Yeah. Yep. Uh, this is a pretty rough over under of 159 and a half. It's because Freo are the second best defense. It's also yeah, because so. of how cold and windy this joint yeah. gets. Yeah. It's going to be gross. So I actually had thought about going down for one of these Tassie games. This was one of the ones that I'd looked at. Really? I'm like, ah, I just don't know if I can be bothered. <laughs> it's like, I'd rather just be not that cold. <laughs> yeah, fair. simply. It's uh, been pretty cold. Give yeah. us some stats, stats man. Yeah, uh, Freo have won the last six meetings against the Hawks by an average of 34 points. So they've smashed them the last two times. There was a close one in between there that made them uh, a little bit better. So there, there's been a couple of 60 plus point games in the last couple of years. Uh, what else have we got there? Freo are two from Tyvon Tazzy, as Alex said. Hawks have won five of the last six, actually. Uh, is that, that's, I don't know. Oh, five of the last six games, of course. They've been really good. Covered the line a lot of them. Frio as well, really good away. We talked about Frio away last year. They were really good at the G, really good just away from home. They're They've covered the, the line in nine of the last 11 away games, and they're five and three away this year. So they're but probably. Two, but two of 12 in Tassie. Two of 12 in Tassie. Yeah. They don't usually play, they haven't played in Tassie for a while, I think. So, but nine of the last 11 away games, they've covered the line. So that's pretty promising. Nice one. Uh, the big question here for me we see Luke Jackson go into the primary rock role. Yep. Yeah. That's fine. I think that's Tracy, okay. Tracy, Amir, Sam Skirt. Tracy's been great, yeah. Getting your man Sicily back makes a big difference. Doesn't make enough of a difference. It's going to be my question, right? Like okay. that is a really, really, really imposing at times Freo forward line. Jackson being as the solo ruck, we know that sometimes that pops off. Sometimes it gets a bit wonky. I don't know. This is a really weird one. Weird things. Where do they happen? <laughs> In Tassie. In Tassie. The big question here is, are the Hawks a finals chance? I just put that in there because I like this. They're, every other year, right, and this time of the year, with that record, they would be in the top eight. They're very unlucky, but are they a finals chance with that percentage? That's, that's the tough part, isn't it? Because their percentage, yeah. what is it? 94. It's worse than Bombers. So Freo is third way. on the ladder Yep, on 42 points. Yep. Hawthorne to 32 points and 13th. This is the thing that I it's keep banging crazy, on about. Crazy. It's chaotically close this year. They're eight and eight. Frio are one and ten against Hawthorne in Tasmania. Oh boy! One so, and ten. so it's two and twelve, not two from twelve. I got that wrong. Wow! One of the wins was by one point against St Kilda, and they <laughs> whopped Hawthorne by sixty-two points Wait, three years ago. Tassie. St Kilda played two games. Was yeah. it, was it St Kilda or Hawthorne the siren gate? St oh, Kilda was siren that's gate. Right. There well, we the go. Umpires said the siren yeah. was gone. Yeah, nice. that's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, with that in mind, I'm taking the Hawks by thirteen. Ooh, taking the Hawks by three. You guys are both going Hawks. Are yeah. you all right? Tazzy, man. Frio have been, weird things. Frio are top four, lads. Yeah, but 
Mate, they're 2 and 12 in Tasmania. <laughs> they're 2 and 11 at this stadium. I'm going Freo by 16. I don't trust uh, the Hawks' defense to control big, uh, the big pineapple, they call him. Fremantle Tracy, have so. kicked over 100 points in Tasmania once. Like Jim said last week, I think a miss is back into form. He's kicked a couple of goals lately. So a miss and Tracy are going to kick a bag each, and then Freo are going to win by 16. Too cold. Too cold. Too cold Freo, Freo do like the warm weather in WA. Too many rabbits. <laughs> Too many <laughs> rabbits in China. Keep the rabbits out. Too cold. All right, move on. Bulldogs, Carlton. The Blues are 13 and a half point favourites at Marvel, 4.30 in the afternoon on Saturday. Big game. 176 and a half is the over-under. You have the second place Blues taking on the 11th place Bulldogs, who are, where are they? 500. The line of, of course, demarcation. Of eight and eight. The Blues, 11 and five, having lost last week in just gross circumstances against GWS. The Blues. Second offense, their defense has been pretty loss horrible, as it's the French worse. and Spanish it's might be worse. saying out there. They're fifteenth, giving up eighty six point two. They routinely give up hundred point games. The dogs at Marvel worry me a lot. To the point where I had tipped the dogs, but I'm really? talking this one into existence. I think this week. So is this just you tipping against them and hoping that Carlton get the job done? And dogs have a few outs. I think is this is, is it. Does now, Cody Whiteman's back in, but no, no defense. But James is our favorite player. Simon O'Donnell's son. Hello, I'm Simon O'Donnell's son. James uh, O'Donnell. <laughs> James. He's, not a, he's not a big out. But he's been concussed. Aaron Norton is a big out. Yeah. So, Cody Waitman comes back in. Yeah. Liam Jones is still out. Caleb Porter comes in. I don't mind James Caleb O'Donnell Porter. and Aaron Norton. For the Blues, Mitch McGovern goes out. Orazio. Orazio. Fantasia has been dropped. Good. Uh, Caleb Marchbank comes in for McGovern. Pitto comes in. So, this is interesting for You're the Blues. You're trying to stretch them. They literally just go, we're Wait, going to do TDK and Pitta playing TD, TDK has been listed pull that. forward. They're, tr- they're trying to stretch the undersized Bulldogs. And I, I don't, don't mind, mind that. Yeah, and yeah. so once I saw the ins and outs for this one, I have switched my pick to the Blues yep. because Cripper's 200th game, I don't think they lose this. Oh, yeah. I think TDK, he loves a bit of Marvel. He, he does. He, he doesn't does. mind sneaking forward for a goal. And with Pitto in the ruck against Tim English, I think he's actually able to do so. Uh, with Cottrell, they didn't drop him for this week, which is pretty important, I think, because he looked very oh, see, he looked very scratchy last week did, coming though, back. Yeah. yeah, and that was I think I'm not going to you know lump that all on one person, but there was like a bunch of that team that felt pretty underdone, and, pressure and it was and weird like that, that yeah. Hewitt was not playing in that game where yeah. I feel like yeah. he ought to have. Uh, anyway, but the weird thing is Hewitt is still an emergency in this. You've got Boyd on the interchange. That shows how Hollins. good your midfield depth is. is if uh, Kennedy's been listed there as well. Mitch, Mitch McGovern, though. Weeders has clearly come back up with his yep. corky, so he's okay. <sighs> it's a weird game, though. The Dogs won this last time by 20 points. Yep. They just sort of kept them at arm's length the entire time, and it was pretty gross. Uh, the game before that, Carlton did kind of the same thing, won by like 18 or something yeah. off the top of my head. And it was just kind of weird. And like – I just don't like the Carlton defense with McGovern going out. It's going to get a bit wonky. Marchbank comes But you in. look at the Dogs defense. You got Buku. I actually really rate Buku, but he, him at fullback is a way. They've only got Rory Lobb down there as a tall. Caulfield's not a tall. And all the rest of them. Everyone else there is like a Deconing, yeah. Charlie and Harry. Yeah, I that's a way. the Blues might be a little bit okay yeah. in this one. Yeah. So uh, give us some stats, stats, man. Yeah, you said Dogs won in the last uh, by 20 points, but they've alternated wins in the last seven meetings. Yeah. So it's this time, to read on. so by the stats, you're going uh, Carlton win because it's gone Dogs, Carlton, Dogs, Carlton, Dogs, Carlton. Uh, dogs last one, I'm going Carlton in this one. Uh, each of Carlton's last seven games as well, I've gone over the total points. As we said, they're the second best offense in the comp. They Their defense is really average, so... I think that 176, even though that's a bit higher than all the games we've had so far, it's going over that, especially at Marvel under the into the perfect conditions. And then you got Charlie Cameron. You said uh, TDK man. loves Marvel. Charlie loves Marvel more Charlie than anyone Cameron. in the comp. Three plus goals in his last five matches at Marvel. Trelaw as well. I feel like we haven't given enough uh, love to Trelaw. He averages 26 in a goal against I think the Blues. We, I think we give Trelaw more love than just about anybody. True. I, I think I said that two weeks ago where uh, we were talking about We Trelaw. love a bit Adam Trelaw. Yeah. I uh, just say he gets a lot of the footy but doesn't impact. No, he, I've changed my mind on that. He's, it's just, he's impacting a lot lately, I think. Yeah. Big question. Is Charlie okay? That's, we don't know. We just don't quite in know. In terms of injury? He or just doesn't look he's four, right. I'd mm. rest him. Not this game. I think they have North, North again next week. next week. But do you, you think he's injured or he's just, just had some good defenders? Well, they've said that he might not play this week because mm. he's been sore. So Anyway, Blues by 12. Alex? 20. Stats boy. Uh, what did I say? Three goals to Blues. Last one. Adelaide Oval, 7.30 Saturday night. The Crom. 
Staying on the Saints. Is this 7.30 Adelaide time, 7.30 our time? Because again, 7.30 this, our time, I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, this means the games are starting at the same time. Yes, yes, unfortunately. Okay. That is a confirmed 7.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard God Time. Damn In it. comes our beloved Riley Thrillthorpe. Yes! yes! The thrill. I love him. Thrill house. Thriller. <laughs> the entire season turns around now. Hugh Bond <laughs> as well. now. It's a bit late. Hey. Hugh Bond makes his debut. Love that. Mitch Hinge goes out injured and Isaac Rankine obviously suspended. For the Saints, Riley Bonner, Zach Jones. Oh, jeez. Uh, Brad Hill out for personal reasons. Yeah, that's, that's come sad, out yeah. in the last Tough. hour. Mm. And Windhag is out injured as well, obviously. He got so. subbed at three-quarter time yep. last week. Tough scenes. The over-under is 158.5 and, and Adelaide Oval. And uh, it's... Yeah, I agree. Unless Thriller goes <laughs> off, let's go. One fifty eight and a half. <laughs> Actually, at Adelaide Oval, that's eighty all basically. Yeah, or well, seventy nine all. That's a tricky one. Adelaide Oval has thrown up some weird spanners in the works where one just team just doesn't show up usually. Yeah, and, and it's, it's, usually like the home, it's usually the home. It's usually the home. But does team. this feel like it's like an eighty five to sixty game? One hundred percent. Well, yeah. you talked about. I'll I'll say that on that point about the the home team Come hasn't showed up. Man. You said the team one team doesn't show up. The away team has covered the line in nineteen of the last twenty four games at the Adelaide Oval. So Port Adelaide and Adelaide just have had. Really weird years at home. Very nice weird. one. Any other stats there, Stats Man? Uh, what about Adelaide have won 12 of the last 14 meetings, including a 52-point smashing against the Saints at the Adelaide Oval last Ooh. time. So Saints don't have just, yeah, Adelaide love playing against the Saints pretty much. The big thing here for me is like, did the Saints just play their grand final last week? The way that uh, the, the funny thing is, I don't they? know. Yes, if they the answer is no because it wasn't the grand final. They just beat the best team we've ever seen. So, but if the they played the best team we've ever seen, but they if lost they two games. played like the way that they did in the last quarter and a half of football, they'd actually be a slightly enjoyable team to well, watch. That was last and they'd year. win more games. We saw them play is, in the is finals. Is it Liam Henry getting fit and healthy? Because 100%. he was in the first three mm. weeks, and remember, they were good. A few of us tipped him. Oh, I tipped him. I think against you did Collingwood, against yeah. Collingwood. They like, played well. Yeah. Wait, St Kilda are good. Well. They were supposed to continue on that form from last year making finals, and then maybe Henry is a big out. Yeah. Well, he's back in now. But yeah, that's yeah, yeah. awesome last I think week. It makes them way and more interesting, also, way more fun. The poo. Yes. First game in six weeks, he had 25 touches, went, boys, me. That's the so, first game he's had was the, like a good game. Was in a the while. first ever game he's had over 20 touches? Oh, yeah. His full name is Matthias Lenny Hayes, Joey Montagna, <laughs> Nick Rewalt. <laughs> Nick Rewalt. Rewalt. So. How dare you leave out Fraser Garrick? He kicked the long bomb on the left foot. Or the nah. tip rat. Uh, yeah, no, any other stats there, stats, man? Uh, we'll get some player ones. You guys were talking about some players. Saints have had a bit of resurgence because of Jack Sinclair. 28 plus disposals in his last four matches. Honestly, didn't he, notice him on he's Sunday. A, he does have a lot of nothing touches, but off half back or in the midfield, he's been really good. Really good for super coach as well. Then the Texan, he loves playing against the uh, Saints. Seven of the last eight home meetings against the Saints, he's had three plus goals. So Not bad. I hope he can kick a few guys, but he's been very average this year. Who They'll need him to kick three plus to win. Who are the bigger frauds? That's the big question in this one. I put that in That's there. This game? I just put that in there because they've both been horrible. They're they're both, not, but they're not frauds. They're both bottom six teams. No, well, Saints made finals and, last it's year. It's 14th place, 15th. So yeah. let's not get hung up on frauds. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Like frauds is the is, is another game later this round. I think Saints are massive I think the frauds. Idea is who stinks more? Yeah, thank you. Okay, who stinks more? Uh, I'm going to say Saints just because... Uh, <sighs> St Kilda did beat the Swans and Collingwood this year. The most funny aspect of this will be that St Kilda losing to Adelaide in Adelaide yeah. after beating the Swans. Swans. So that would have been St Kilda losing at home to the Swans. I'm going to take the no, Crows by Adelaide. five. Stats Just, boy. Uh, I'll, actually, I might go the Crows by ten. I've changed my mind. I think this is going to be close because yeah. both teams are very average. And Alex? I Crows by mind. 11. Hmm. I, but I wouldn't be shocked if the Saints pull this one out. Have we seen these two teams play already this year? I don't it feels think like they so. have in my brain. No, I don't. I don't think so. In your brain, you probably got there are a lot of different things you, going on. You've in probably my brain. got Port Adelaide and St Kilda on your brain because it was two weeks ago. We've also lesions. done a lot of podcasts. A lot of, a lot of <laughs> Melbourne Essendon on Saturday night as well. The MCG at the exact same time as the Adelaide Oval game because that's very smart. Well done, everybody. Yeah, well done. Uh, you're watching this St Kilda game. I'll be at the MCG. I'm not watching the St Kilda game. <laughs> yeah, I'm not watching it either. <laughs> Send that oh, what's one. the high burn, one? Burn the tapes. Burn the tapes. Over under is one sixty three and a half. This could hit over. This could hit over. The bombers could Ooh. hit the over almost by themselves. I agree. So That's why I've tipped them by a lot. Uh, the D's offense has been not great, but they are now up to thirteenth. Last week they beat up on the Eagles. But the Eagles are horrible. Of, yeah, but kind Ooh. of. It's like. Yeah. So what do you, you read from that? Because the week before they lose to Brisbane at the so, Gabba, they beat, they just fall over the line against North. Yeah. The week prior to that, they get killed by the Pies. They get absolutely demolished by the Dockers. 
Okay, so you this w- is a fun one. So the Bombers are ten and a half point favourites. What do we read into this? So, okay, I think that it, line is sorry. way too small, by the way. Look at it last week where Melbourne just had that great first quarter, seven goals to one. After quarter time, it was ten goals to seven. That's I, I think you look at the last three quarters because West Coast is still adjusting and waking up. Ten goals to seven in the last three quarters yeah. is how you should look at the game of footy. Well, that's that's Melbourne, even against, uh, what was it, two weeks in a row, they couldn't even kick on the last yeah. quarter. Their fitness is the biggest worry in this game, and Essendon didn't have so many guys in that can the, run in out In the again. second half, it was six goals Melbourne, five goals West Coast. This is a huge Ridley-Nick Martin yeah. cold world game. At the game. G, yeah. It's going to be awesome. Uh, the G on a, like a cold Saturday night, I just trust Essendon way more. Yeah. The big question Which here is- Which is so funny. Like, what will the D's cope without Gorn and Track? I, I think they'll be there, yeah. just demolished at it. Like, yeah. They've got no hope. Literally, Larry got 15 touches. There was a week. couple of games, even at the Gabba, like, there was a couple of games where they got smashed and you're like, oh, who was the best player on the ground? Maybe Gorn, even though they lost. Yep. Without Gorn, I think Gorn is a bigger out than Track. Like, Track, obviously, yeah. is their uh, guy that is just a bit more classy, but Gorn is their workhorse. So, so. they've actually, no, so Harrison Petty comes in for Gorn. Yeah. And he's li- literally listed he's, as their follower. So. He's an unders- undersized rock. Tell you who they could use right now? Brody Grundy. Ooh, tough one. <laughs> yeah. uh, so this I think it's Sam Draper and two meter Peter if you need to throw him in Is relief. Goldie back? God. Oh, no. Goldie's a... Mer- that, that's a joke. They're going with Draper. But this also means that that's Rue may have to play some rock time. And he's been awesome, awesome at full four, 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 four oh, the yes, last two yeah. weeks. Don't play him in the rock because he's he's a young kid who's going awesome at full four. It means mm. Petty's going to have to do it all night. It just doesn't look good for the D's. We said at the start of the season, they are a Christian Petrarca and Max Gorn injury away from devastation. That. Yeah, yeah. Like, that was my big call about yeah. them missing the eight. And now that they're both out, they this cooked. is Essendon's time to prove to us that they are legitimate. This so is that, the That game. might be the big question where you go, hey, Essendon, are you Show good? Show us that you're going to smash Are you them, good? Yeah. Answer us right now. If Essendon win this game, I don't care what the margin is, as long as they win this game... They have a chance. It's me going, okay, I believe. Okay. Tyson Heppel comes in for Jaden Laverty. Uh, possibly one of the most just, I don't know, perfectly named Essendon players ever, Jaden <laughs> Laverty. <laughs> Great job. Good name. It's a good name. Uh, interesting setup. I'm going to go the Bombers by, I think it's a bit just wonky and gross on Saturday night, 28 points. That's 20, boy. Uh, I'm, this is my big call, which I'll get into later, and I can, I can talk a bit more about that then, but Bombers by 50. Nice one, Alex. They're going to smash him. Uh, what did I say? Two goals. <laughs> Good job. Because it's Essen. Sunday. We're at Gold Coast playing. Oh, that's right. Above the 28th parallel. Oh, here we go. I'm just saying. What do we have enough to preview I'm just this? saying. That's why they're favorites. They're five and a half point favorites against the Port Adelaide. You've got the power to win. The power to boo your coach name, Ken. And away we go. People's <laughs> first stadium, 1.10 p.m. Is he Kenuff? I don't know. I don't know. Jim. Love the Suns in this one. Absolutely stoked. Because where is it? Above the 28th parallel. This is a fun team up the there. The AFL today idea. <laughs> Yours. My theory of the 28th parallel We're all undefeated. Board. We're all They're going to smash port. Let's go. 166 and a half. Noah Anderson, Sam Flanders. Actually, I thought you were all on board the 28th parallel and you two tipped Gold Coast. So you went against it and I didn't, but that's another that's another round. Well, I believe that they were better than North Don't Melbourne. ever tip them away and it always tip I'm them I'm still home. going. There's two games this year uh, outside of Gold Coast. I tip genuinely won't tip them. We know that anyway. I cooked that because I initially You changed the tip, Because yeah. I'm an idiot. <laughs> In for the Suns come Malcolm Roses, Alex Davies, Jed Walter, Connor Buderick, and Jed Lloyd Walter. Johnson. My beloved... Jed Walter is his full name. That is extended bench, of course. Took Miller goes out with his injured oh. hand, wrist. Yeah. Yeah. Broken. Sam Day goes out as well. That was a tough one for the Port Adelaide Power. Now, Alex asked, asked this question the other day. Has Charlie Dixon played his final game? I answered, no, that's silly. He's back. Uh, <laughs> Mitch but no, these are still extended benches because it's Sunday. He is still, he's actually listed on the bench, so he might That's still That's brutal miss. that he's listed on the extended <clears throat> bench. I don't reckon he'll also, They have also named Don Tevis and Danny and Will Lorenz, Jed McEntee. I think he probably gets the nod ahead of Don Tevis. This is a weird one, but genuinely, Malcolm Rosas Jr., I think is a huge in. I know people don't talk about him that much, but he's a Jet. We'll talk about him. Every time I watch him, every time I watch him play, he he knows how to get a goal. He's one of the best crummers for Gold Coast. I think he's a beast. Yeah, Good he's, chat. He's, he's, no, he is. He's, he's northern Matt Owies. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> he's a lot better than Matt Owies. He's got a smaller head as well. Matt Owies is the biggest Six and a half is the over-under. <laughs> I'll probably go the over in this one. You've got... Yeah, especially Gold Coast. Gold Coast at home. home, just, what, they average 107 points a game. Like so that, yeah. 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 Let's go. Uh, the Suns, I just trust their defense of like Mac Andrew and co. A little bit more than the Port Adelaide. Also, no Georgiades after five last exactly. week. Exactly. Georgiades is a huge out, so... 
tough suspension, but between Flanders, between Matty Rowell at home. Noah Anderson. Noah Anderson, my beloved Noah Anderson, my beloved Jet Walder. I think the Suns smash him in this one. The big question is, can the Suns break the... I wrote the Port, port curse, Jim. So the Port curse. Port have won the last 14 meetings. Gross. The last 14 meetings against Gold Coast. Where have the, they been? No, there's been very everywhere. Everywhere. I had a look. I had a look. Uh, that was after the revenge of, I think, Gold Coast's first ever win was against That Port. was against so, Richmond. So they said... That was against oh, Richmond. Oh, sorry. Second, might have been second ever win. But they took that personally. And since then... Good Port, chat, boys. Port have dominated against Gold <laughs> they Coast. They won the first ever game that they played against Port Adelaide. And since yes. then, they've there lost... There we go. Thank you. That's one, good. two, three, four, five. I believe five. you, Thank you. Seven of believe. them have been at... Uh, yeah, Carrara. seven of the 14. Two of them have been in China, so they don't count. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about the China games. I believe it's The amount of pollution China. in the air for that one. Uh, oh at, at Jingwan Stadium, where there was somehow 10,000 people. Wait, Paul, don't lose in Jingwan, I'm Racist. telling you, <laughs> That's the name, Jingwan Stadium. That's what it is. Rabbits. Uh, anyway, Port just love playing. That's why I put the big question. Can the Suns break the Port curse because they don't know how to beat the uh, power and then continue the... Mine was more who are the bigger frauds. Yeah, I think they smash them. I think... Well, not so much smash them, but just like... They just lost the North, but they're at home. I against. think they're the team that sort of just muscles them out of the way. Give us some stats very quickly, stats boy. Uh, just other than Gold Coast, uh, still score 48 more points at home. They that's a lot. That's a lot more. So it was down from 57 a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> they still score a lot there. Ben Long, home specialist. I, I can't stand Ben Long. So Ben Long and Ain Ben He's Ainsworth, been... they've just got to like a, a million T bins. Uh, <laughs> it's just like the Gold Coast bins. Uh, yes. Because you've also ben got King. Ben King. So. Yeah. You've just got the whole four line is Ben. Ben's coming out the wazoo, and they're all just randomly really good at home. So yep. I like that. Ben Long is like one of those great bets when he's at home, just like the yeah, sneaky two plus, one or two plus. He like, loves it. Sure, last four games, and then Noah Anderson. You guys have talked about before. Thirty three plus disposals. Last five home games nice. away. He doesn't know what he's doing. Gold goes by three goals. Ooh. I think they're up by more. And there's a run by Port randomly yep. out of nowhere in one of those stupid up north games where they're like, oh wait, we should play harder. <laughs> Gosh, but and then they goal goes up by like forty eight. Yeah, point. fair enough. Stats boy, uh, I'm going Suns by twenty five. The twenty eighth uh, parallel Lex. continues. Thirteen points. Nice. Richmond GWS at MCG at three twenty on the Sunday afternoon. This is <laughs> who's going to be there. This is bad. This the Giants are twenty six and a half point favorites. No, he's not. Oh, what's the point of going to this game? One sixty nine and a half is the over under. I don't think this goes over. This is GWS could score this themselves. Mm, Richmond haven't been too bad on. How many defense. points they score against Carlton last week, Jim? Like one hundred and twenty. Uh, one hundred and eighteen, I think. In the end, one sixteen yeah. was yeah, it? One sixteen, one hundred four. Mm, I think. Somewhere, in the end. yeah. Uh, my big question for this would be: How many does Jesse Hogan snag? He looked yeah. awesome against the. Finally, last looked week. back last week with five. Yeah. Six. I'm gonna say four. Yeah. Not bad. In for the Tigers comes the meatball, Dion Prestia, That's Sam Ryan, Steely Green, one of the great names. Yes. James Trezizi. There we go. That's, Trezizi. That's not right. Tommy Trezice. 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 And Seth Campbell and K. McAuliffe go out. Lucky Ash, Xavier Halloran, Jacob Weir in for the Giants and extended bench. So, no outs So yet. those three will be the emergencies. Well, there's a couple of other names on that bench where it's like Fonty, Thomas, no, nah, maybe Thomas don't get there. They won't change from last week. They might not. They'll be great good. from last week, yeah. Stats boy, give us some stats. Uh, yeah, Tigers lost their last seven home matches. That's why the uh, MCG attendance has gone down for them lately. And then, But they've won three of the last four meetings against the Giants. Giants have had a really good last four, uh, four or five years. But, yeah, Tigers have they a really good record. They were pathetic two years ago. Mm. But, uh, yeah. GWS, this feels like a bit of a – the big question here is, like, do we see a tsunami and can they stop a tsunami? I think Richmond no. have absolutely no chance. Remember of when we a sat there and watched the tsunami in the finals last yeah, year? That the was the best. We were, we were drinking tins, watching. We got homie uh, video producer that didn't go for a team. He goes for GWS. Mate, now. we were sitting a row in front of Gil. That was that was beautiful. That was a great day. That's why. That's when he started closing the roof. Uh, <laughs> so I heard that no, guy talk about I think how much the, he loves open roofs. <laughs> <laughs> they can't stop the tsunami when the Tigers are literally the seventeenth worst defense. I They've don't think been that's possible. Lost horrible on yeah. defense. So I think. GWS smashed them in this one. I think it turns into just like one of those gross slowdown games in the second half. We're yep. like, why are we here? Like, yeah. what are we doing? No <laughs> one's going to be at the G going, oh, here. this is a great game, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go GWS by 35. I think I'm going to go Giants by 30. I think I don't think it's going to be a smashing. Richmond haven't been too bad lately. Like, sort of like they played against Geelong. Show a bit of fight in the first half. Giants haven't been that good. They've had one good week and everyone's like, oh, they're back. They've had one good week. I think it's going to be about 30 points. I think 
the way that GW is set up in the middle, like between Tom got Green. Cogs back as well. Yeah. Like exactly, right? Yeah, With that helps. Caniglio back and firing. I think they're just a little bit too good. Alex? Fair enough. Engage it. 65 points. Oh, 65. 65. I wouldn't be that surprised. Like 35 to 65 would be my range. Against so. the 18th team in the comp, not North. So. Finally, West Coast Brisbane out at Optus Stadium. That's out West. The Lions are 28 and a half point favorites. Are we going to see a dead coach bounce is the big question here. Oh, who's coaching again? Um, uh, I can't remember. Like Shepard. Shepard. No, not Jamie Shepard. Schofield. 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 Jared right. Schofield, wasn't it? Yes. yes. What am I thinking of? I was reading a thing about um, Brad Shepard. Uh, Brad Shepard doing the AFL today. Yes. One seventy point five is the over under. What are we looking at? The Lions are fourth on offense and defense. The Eagles are seventeenth and sixteenth. That's Ugh. yeah, it's not going to be great. So it's a weird <laughs> trip though because stats were stats us up. Yeah, Brisbane have won the last five meetings, but this is their first trip to Optus Stadium since twenty seventeen. So you've had, I think it's, how many years? I'm trying to think how many years that is. Seven years. That would be seven. Seven, sorry. He's not a mathematician. There's eight, eight uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Brisbane. What year is it right now, Stats, man? Oh, 2026. Yeah, Brisbane yeah. literally got belted by Frio in round one. They no, did. At Optus. Sorry. Let me, like, can I say that again? First trip to Optus against the Eagles. First time they've played away against the Eagles since 2017. Sorry, I didn't write that one down right. All right, I've got a million stats in here. I can't get them all right. Well, you are the stats guy. Why <laughs> nah. would you get them all right? <laughs> exactly. You know, it, that just, can, that I, just can I leave? Isaac Heaney's appeals failed. I'm just want to go. Oh, back. I did it. Yes, come on, North. We're gonna win. Can we just have, like the rest of the show is a close up of Alex's face? Did it? Is it official? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> close up. Just yes. Non stop. Rest of the show. Are you ready to sing the North song, Jim, on the weekend? Hey, have you ever seen like just an emoji come to life of just like angry face? Yeah, like, man getting like, hit yeah. by football. <laughs> 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 Wait, official. Give that man the ten thousand oh dollars, man. Can we stop the show? It? That that's just beautiful. <laughs> I didn't want to have to face Isaac Heaney and Callum Mills on the weekend. So he played for a Victorian team. Oh, here we go. Oh, the conspiracy. He hit someone in the face. You had to play for a Victorian be, team. If we be, had a Callum Mills, we wouldn't have lost. He, he's pretty be, much Andrew Gaffney. It's going to be great when he wins the Norm Smith Medal. <laughs> going to be great. Buddy. When they lose that'll, North, that'll show him. Uh, okay, let's go back. Brisbane to West, Coast, West Coast. So yes. West Coast. The big question, obviously, is dead coach. Dead coach bounce. Like, yeah, is there one there? I don't know if they've got enough talent or skill no. to actually pull it off. They no, do McGovern bring in, is a big out. They lose Jerry McG McGovern. They yeah. lose Campbell Chassis. He's been dropped. Harry Edwards comes in. Luke Edwards. They're just getting all the Edwards. Zane True. <laughs> Who? Zane True. Zane True. That's a shocking name. Jeez. Just. Is that what you're saying? If your last name's True, like, you know what we should call our kid? False. Zane. Oh. Uh, false is a good one. So that's <laughs> oh, why I like on. that. There we go. False, true, not bad. That's a great name. Ryan Marich, Jai Cully. Uh, in for the Lions, Jack Payne is out injured. That's a tough one. And obviously, Starsevich out with a concussion. Two big outs, actually. They're part of their big, so big team. It is a bit of a question for the Lions. I just don't – with McGovern out for the Eagles, it's just – Driving so, home as we speak. As right we speak. He's, he's probably listening to the show right now. His just wife's like, just angry, like, why do I have to drive you home? He's somehow got a live stream. Yeah, you know how <laughs> angry your missus gets yeah. when she has to drive you home from the pub? Yeah. Times that by a thousand. Well, three days it takes to drive. A from thousand? The it's yeah. like, oh, I'm going to pick you up from Adelaide? What were you doing in Adelaide? I got a punctured lung. Doing what? Working. <laughs> Working. As <laughs> if. It's not an office job. She, <laughs> if you had a punctured lung, that'd be a worry. Old would just be like, nah, you can walk. Actually, I reckon it's like, it's the Nullarbor. I can't. Ned like, Brockman did the train. I don't care. I reckon Jim could get a puncture lung podcasting. For sure. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Uh, in for the Lions, <laughs> Darren Joyce, Devin Robertson, the rig. Love that. Yes. Jackson Pryor, Darcy Fortin, and my our beloved man. Our man. Shadow Brain. <laughs> I feel like if the Eagles had a full team. Yes. They could give this a shake. Yeah. They match up pretty well never, with a full team. Never, ever, ever underestimate the dude. Dead coach bounce. I agree. But. So, are you going to tip him? <laughs> but I just can't do it. No. The Eagles just aren't good enough. No. Like the Lions. Well, coach, did any coach get sacked? Well, I can't remember last year, to be honest. Well, did Zimmer coach... left and they brought in Uze. And Zimmer's like, like, oh, I'm going to coach man. Did they you, got smashed no, in the first week. Uze didn't coach during, last year. He was at Melbourne. Wasn't the last sure? two games? It was me. Oh, McWalter. Oh, Andrew McWalter. Andrew McWalter, yeah. McWalter that's yeah, it. Yeah, 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 thank you, Leo. And and so I think they got smashed the first week and then won. They got beaten by Port Adelaide the first week. Yes, yes, yes. Outside of that, look, I think the Lions midfield is just way too good. Yeah, I agree. So I'm going to go to the Lions. Uh, stats, boy? Uh, I'll do some little player stats. You've got Lockie Neal. Everyone's talking about him. He averages 29 disposals just under a goal against West Coast. Liam Ryan as well. He's in his 100th game. Mm. He hasn't been that good. He's been a bit up and down, but he's kicked three plus in four of his last five games against Brisbane. I don't know why I wrote along there. Uh, but I'm going to go Brisbane by 40. I think way too good. They haven't been that convincing. Yep. But West Coast have 
I've been horrible. Road. Where, like, everyone road. gave him a chance against uh, the Hawks. They got smashed by the Hawks. Is this the Alex Witherden Bowl? Uh, kind of. Sort of, but no one Just cares saying. about Alex Witherden. I do find this, like, it is, you got the J train, you've got Oscar Allen two plus goals. Oscar Allen being in is a big help. Without yeah. Jack Payne there, you've suddenly got Harris Andrews going up against one of them. Mm. And got down then... There? Derek Joyce. Derek, Derek Joyce, Joyce isn't, a, isn't a, a key defender, exactly. so that's true. That's I'm just true. saying, there might be a bit of a scope there yeah. for Eagles to stick close. So I'm going to go Eagles, uh, to stay close. Lions by 18. Okay. Alex? Brisbane by six goals. I think they just do enough. It's it's that They're gross. It's a gross when it's like fourteen goals to eight or nine. You're this is like, a classic Sunday evening game. Yeah, yeah, it's like we're sitting here halfway through the third quarter, going, "Yeah, this is." Let's over. start doing the Sunday night show. Yeah. It's like Bri- Brisbane have won. Lockie Neal's had 30. West Coast tried, but they're just not good enough. Yes. Nice. All right. Big calls for round 18. Let's do it. <sighs> Before I saw the teams, I had the dogs beating the Blues and then Blues running the table. But you've changed. Now I'm just going Blues running the table. Let's go. Okay. I believe. My biggest problem with this is that they've looked so scrappy and looked so up and down. Like That's the Blues way. GWS, weird Gross, horrible game. There could be a correction, and it, it could be a loss to the dogs where they just look completely out of sorts, or they could just get back to winning ways. And I think if they do, if they win, they win the rest of their games yep. and actually push Sydney at the top. So uh, outside of that. The I'm Blues not. really need a win to stay in top two, I think, because, yeah, they because they're literally, they're literally only two points above. They literally the, do. They literally <laughs> do. Sorry. Because if yeah. uh, not, was not it they do, they literally or, do. Frio or Essendon win and Carlton lose, they're out of the That'd top That would be two. so funny if Carlton are out of the top. 100%. This is, the, this is what I had the big problem going into that GDOS game was that everyone had been blowing smoke up the blue. Yeah. They're like, we're going to win the flag. You literally said it Thursday during the day, like, this is the game Carlton It's lose. the trap game. It was 100% you said a that. trap game. Yep. Uh, Dogs is always a trap game for the Blues. As you said, we go one and one and one and one and one and one. Yep. Having lost the last one, I think they win this one, though. Yep. Fingers crossed. And then they were on the table. Because uh, they do have a... There's like a Pies game in there. There's another slightly tough game, but the rest of their schedule is not too bad. Mm-hmm. Stats boy. Uh, I'm going Essendon win by 50 plus. I said it before, against Melbourne, no track, no Gorn. They've literally got no heart at all. you got Stephen May. I know he's a bit of a flog, but he has a bit of heart. But a lot of their other guys... He's that, looked average the he's last looked, month. He's man. looked pretty average. Uh, you've got a lot of guys in there that aren't defending, aren't two-way runners, and aren't going to be putting those tackles on, especially on the wings and things like that. Essendon love penetrating from the wings, so... I genuinely think they can win by 50 plus. I still don't rate Essendon that highly, but it's just the fact that I rate Melbourne so lowly that they're going to smash them. So 50 plus. I do like the big call could be that Essendon get their percentage above 100. Yeah. Well, the, if, if they win 50 plus, they could actually have yeah, a decent they will, percentage. They will be above so I, I think that would be pretty good. Yeah. Alexi. Someone backhands someone that doesn't get a week. <laughs> oh, here we go. Mr. Salty. Sorry, 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 translation. Oh. <laughs> ah, but in, in reality, Tsunami engaged in GWS. It's, I know it's only Richmond, but everyone's like, oh, we but don't want to yeah. play. Well, them. if you win at the G, no matter who you're playing, I think that's a big win. But it's yeah. it's 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 more the state it's more the statement of the win with the game style. You look at it and go, it's, oh, it's 120 to 40. Yeah, yeah I'll Oh, if they smash him, everyone, yeah, everyone absolute respect pants GWS. It's like, oh, God, they're yeah. back. Because, like, that. beating Carlton when you're at home is, like, a little bit different. You've already yeah. played them this year as yeah. well. If you just come out and wax Richmond and, like, to the tune of 80 points. And, it's, and I know it's up. only Richmond, but it's you come and do it two weeks in a row. It's like, oh, no. Yep. Uh, keep an eye on. What are we looking at in round 18 to keep a massive eye on? The big one is obviously the Suns and the Power. Mm. Because this becomes a... It's round 18. You don't want to say this is a finals game, but this is a finals game. Basically, because the Suns, they're 8 and 8. Line of demarcation, you're at 500. If you slip behind at this point of the season, it becomes a really, 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 really hard run home because at that point, you'd be two losses behind basically anybody who's in 7 or 8. Yeah, yeah. And to make up the two losses in five rounds, six rounds, is going to be really, really hard. So I think that Suns power game is the pivotal game of the weekend. Carlton Western Bulldogs is pretty similar as well because if Carlton lose, that could bump them as far down basically as fifth. That's so funny. I hope so to happens. go from two to six in a week is a massive kick in the groin. Yeah. Whereas the uh, Dogs at eight and eight, the same thing almost applies to them for the Suns. Yeah. Uh, we know how classy they can be. If they Suns lose this one, I know you still have belief somehow. If Suns lose this, they're... Oh, they're yeah. done. They're, they're, done. they're absolutely I will done. give up. Yeah, fair enough. And the dogs, so if they drop that one against the Blues, that's another pivot game for them, I think. Hawthorne so. and Freo too. Yep. Hawthorne, 
Hawthorne's percentage isn't good enough. Their percentage is so but bad. They, but anyway, if they keep but... winning, if they keep winning, you're laughing. But I mean, last week was the correction game. I feel like we all thought, right, that uh, they lost to the Cats. Yeah. yeah. If they can beat Freo down in Tassie, they'll sign a few tips, people. Yeah, yeah. Well, as you two tipped, yeah. Freo, might this happen. might be like, yeah, the big sort of fraud call out. Yeah. Outside of that, I mean, I want to, some of the ins and outs here. Like, you want to see how Hawthorne look with Sicily back. You want to see how the Crows look look with Thrillthorpe. Back. I just want to see the Swans win. I, 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 put, I just put Callum Mills in there because I just yeah. want to see how he goes because everyone still talks about he's their captain. He's this this superstar. I think it'll still take a few weeks to get I back. Th- into yeah. It. Did I he think, just say superstar? So he because, said superstar. I, I did not. Uh, I, I still That's think, not how you say it. <laughs> I still think he's super important to the way the Swans structure up. So That's boys are like, yeah. can I? Can we have some biscotti after this? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think the addition of Mills is very important. I'll pay that. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I think the other big sort of in-out aspect was trying to figure out like the pies on Friday night. Yeah. So Billy so Elliott comes in. Good players. Are yeah. they like this is the reigning premiers? Like they have a really hard. Run people as talk well. about oh, you've got to defend the premiership. Like you don't lose last year's premiership if you lose. It's not a wrestling belt. No one cares. You know? Like if no. I'm a pie supporter and I don't make finals, I'm like ah, oh, we won the flag. You won the flag. Yeah. Like they've hit a. I want to know what the uh, sort of. There's a point of no return where you hit with injuries, I think, in a season. It's close the to that. The pies yeah. are very close. Yeah, so next they, couple of weeks. I'm basically looking forward to whether or not they put up a big fight. So yep. their ins this week are pretty interesting with Noble, Elliot, and McInnes. The outs it's are also just as big least, with how yeah. I check. So yep. what do we see from the pies? So that's a big one for me. Super coach. Let's do it. Thoughts, vibes. I'm um, vice captaining Grundy on Saturday at the SCG, given that average, into Tom Green as captain. Um, with the tsunami, I need Krugs to get 120 because Max Gorn's out, so that's not going to happen. But I really need that. Why do you need that? Just because. Sure. I don't know. Otherwise, I otherwise I'd be trading Gorn for Cherry. Cherry's been awesome, and I he's traded only, Gorn. He's only a, he's pretty much the same price as Gorn. Uh, what who are the other rucks you can get? TDK, uh, Jackson, Nank, Jackson, and things like that. So Kruger coming in for Gorn is a big loss because you've lost 60 points there on on average. So yeah, that's that a is tough. Wire. Yeah. Supercoach is a bit weird and wonky this week with the Heaney suspension being up. Rankin, of course. Um, well, Heaney's McGovern. named. The, oh, wait, no. Oh, Heaney's, he, he's Heaney's not playing. Gone. Out, Sorry, so, yeah. I forgot. Yeah, it gets a bit wonky very, very quickly. Gone, obviously, out. And so I, I think, think my VC will be, I'll still probably go Dacos on the Friday night against, yeah. the, uh, against the Cats. Yeah, so I'm. Uh, probably. I'm going to go Flanders at ooh. home against the Power. So I'm early Saturday into Sunday Arvo. I'm nice. going Sheasel, Vice Captain, because he's gotten 140. What if he gets tagged. Are you, are you worried that he gets James uh, Jordan? I don't know if he's going to get tagged. I think, oh, anyway, either way, I, I'm going to go home. I, okay. think, I think he'll go well. I'm just being biased. Well argued. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot it. I forgot that James Jordan tags, but so, yeah, there you go. It's a weird one. Uh, are you any? Are you using any trades this week? I used two. So I traded out uh, Rankin and yeah. uh, Gornicus for Tristan Sherry and Jai Caldwell. Yeah, I think Jai Caldwell is a must, must have now because Rankin was the must have forward and then you're like, people were 50-50 so, on Caldwell. Now Cole I've got one trade left now. I taught the squid how to wink, and he does these ones. He's really he's a, <laughs> yeah, really he does the lead. He, he does an yeah, entire yeah, yeah. head wink. <laughs> and I'm like, every time someone says Jai Cobalt's name, I'm like, <laughs> I lean into it as well because I'm like, I told you two weeks ago. Yeah, you're I, on the I've official been on show, it yeah. Because to the very simple fact, I think he's we went, I went from Fisher to Coldwell and uh, worked out a trade. So Perfect. Happy days all Especially around. if Fisher's not back this week, yeah. That was the other big one, right? He's not in there. Yeah, so, I yeah. think. His injury is worse than they first thought. So. Or it's also you don't risk flying him to Sydney when you've got Marvel next week. And he's not that good, so I'm not fussed if he comes back. Uh, that's a bit of a drive. I also just don't <laughs> screw with foot injuries. Simple as that. Yeah. yeah. Right, that's it for AFL today for this week. We'll be back on Sunday evening for the Round 18 wrap, which will be the point where we head into Round 19. That's how these things work, and the passage of time is quite terrifying, is it not? It <laughs> anyway, is. Oh. that is it for AFL today for today. We'll be back on Sunday. Thanks to Alex for jumping on for a Thursday night. I'm never doing a Thursday again. Welcome now. back, mate. The Heaney decision. The Heaney, he just he literally doesn't talk for the last 18 minutes. Can Man, we? Weird. Can we go? There's beer downstairs. Like uh, I just we're gonna I do it. A- Stats boy, thank you. Thank you. You're doing all the work actually on Thursdays. Very good job. Uh, remember to smash a like across all the socials to see us doing lots of fun stuff. Uh, Face the IG, X, Threads, TikTok, and of course YouTube. You can see all of our shows. In fact, AFL Today Show. This is this one. On YouTube, Facey, Instagram, TikTok, X. Yes. Cricket Today podcast, Football Today podcast with all the Euros gear going on. NBA Australia, we had a huge wrap-up of the entire free agency. Huge. Dude, it went for ages. Gerald <laughs> was, was like, himself. get me out of here. He's like, Jim, I'm going to wander over and punch in the head just <laughs> to make you finish because I'm just over it. Uh, you nearly missed Australia, all the pizza. 
Yeah, well, we got a bit of pizza. It was all right. Oh, NFL really? Australia will be back very soon as well and hold all tickets. Quick hiatus. Hiatus for the moment. Good stuff right there. Subscribe, star, and like all of those shows. Or we'll send Stats Guy around to your house just to look weirdly in your bathroom window. That's very specific and very strange. Uh, Get around <laughs> them like, I don't know, Sydney Swans fans getting around excuses about Isaac Haney. And they're going to lose this week. Watch Let's out. go. That's it. We'll catch you on Sunday evening for the round wrap show for AFL Today. Until then, look after yourselves. Have a good weekend. And remember, footy's back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.